Hi there. Uh, this video is primarily for Cody to help you build out uh, this this B2 uh, stealth bomber. Um, originally, I was going to try to email you this video, but it was just too difficult to try to you know get it small enough to be able to fit into the email. So I just had to post on YouTube, and in case anyone else was going to build the, the the B2 later on, they can kind of use this as a reference. All right. So first thing you do, this is the plane right here, is um, you cut out the main piece right here, which builds the frame, and you're going to get in, you're going to end up getting the, the silhouette of the B2 once you glue the two pieces together. Now, the two wing pieces, actually, there's four wing pieces. One goes on top, right here, and one goes on the bottom. You know, it kind of builds almost like a, a quasi KFM4 type of thing. The only difference is it's it's about 60% back, I guess. So it's a, it's a little bit wider KF on here. But it seems to work pretty well, so who cares in, in my book. Um, what else? The way I set this up is that um, these two things, uh, right here, the airfoil, you can kind of see it this way. You know, it's, it's kind of a smooth edge right here. And what I did is I ended up beveling the inside of this thing on both sides. I taped the two pieces together, so essentially you're going to have a book you're gonna have a book with the two of them, and what happens is one side goes here, and the book kind of goes on the other side right here. So this side I glued down first, and I used Gorilla Glue, and I seem to like that a little bit better than the epoxy so far, uh, because it tends to spread out and, and expand, and it kind of just seeps out of the end over here, and I seem to be getting a better bond bond out of that than I did out of the epoxy. So once that's dried, I flip it over. Put some glue on this side to fold fold the wing over down this way, tack it down and put like uh, a book on top of it and put my toolbox on top of the book so it's uh, so it stays nice and flat. This piece over here, this little zigzag piece right here that's cut out, um, it's almost like a zaggy wing and really that just kind of fits into here. Glue it into place, put a book on top of it, put the weight on top of the book and just have that dry out. And There's one on both sides. You can see that I sort of ended up cutting it this way and I cut it out just to fit the motor. Now, the difference is, is this one did not have a spar inside. My original version one did have a spar and I kind of wish I put one in here now uh, because I now, now I want to put a four cell into here and a bigger motor and it just might be too much and may end up falling the wing. You know, so um, I wish I did, but I didn't. I could still sort of do that by slitting it right down in here and sort of sticking it in there and just kind of gluing on top and taping over it again. But, uh, you know I me, mean? I don't have a lot of time, so it, even even every little bit of flying that I get out of this counts, uh, for, besides waiting for glue to dry and, and, and try to modify it even more, because I, I'm pretty happy with the way this flies. This one actually flies upside down, so the first version did not fly upside down very well. My, um, once you put this in, you can see the wing tips that you were mentioning, that question is about. I really just glued the wing tips on here. You may have to trim it out because the pieces I gave you in the cutout may not fit exactly. It's it's uh, it's sort of ballpark. It's not an exact science for me. I just cut a bunch of pieces of paper out and fit it together and then tape it together and, and cut it out and put the, put the plane together. Anything else that's sort of overlapping or hanging out, I just get a blade and I just lop it off. And that's um, that's about as scientific as I get with one of these uh, with one of these foam builds. Um, I did suggest to pull the, I, I tend to peel the paper off of my, of my foam because I like the way it shapes a little bit better. It's a, easy to curve, especially when you're building an airfoil like this. And you can see there's a little bit of a dihedral on here. So I don't know if you can see that, where it kind of comes up a little bit. And I think that's the reason why it's got that funky roll where it gets all funny like this. And the last plane I had that I had a ton of dihedral was my trainer, my slow stick. And it sort of rolled the same way this did. I think if you make it just nice and flat, uh, you'd have a little bit more of an aerobatic plane that flies really good upside down, rolls really good, and flies really good up, right side up too. I just did it in case I wanted to put a camera on this thing later on. I wanted more, more of the stability. And I wasn't sure how stable this was going to be because my last one was not very stable. But this is quite predictable. So I feel a lot more comfortable the next time I do this. I, I just build it right. I just, I just set this flat, completely flat. Um, You'll notice the servos over here. I use an Airtronics, and my Airtronics has 150% throws that I can program into the uh, into, into the servos. 
and um, I know that you use a lot of spectrum over there and the last time I used the DX6i on this thing it didn't have enough throw so I had to actually get my servo cut out a piece right here in the wing and I, and I just put um, I, I just put a direct link right over uh, into that um, and let me see I was gonna suggest also that if you want to these things are still a bit small for me they're still a lot bigger than the, than the first version but I'd probably cut out a greater section right here for the control surface um, now if you happen to do that you're gonna get more control you may not need as much throws and you may be able to set up your servos just like I did over here which is that rolling one almost like the, the RC powered kind of version that they have and, um, uh, and as you get better you know you can uh, you can start dialing up the throws in there you may not even need as much throws if you're just starting out to learn how to figure out how to fly with these things and I was hoping they maybe have a simulator over there that for, for specifically for a wing because their flying characteristics are are a bit twitchier and it's a lot more responsive and quicker than uh, than a full board plane there's not a whole lot of drag on these things so they tend to slice really well through the wind and even though it's just a tiny little bit a small little uh, 2212 6 motor and a 3 cell like a 2200 3 cell um, it seems to cut the wind through the wind really uh, quickly and it's got some pretty good speed you know even as it is um, this over here you're gonna see your canopy I just did it like this um, get a close-up over here put a piece of tape over here flipped one piece of tape upside down and I just stuck it across the nose right here so the back end is a magnet right here and really you know just kind of clicks into place you can probably come up with a better design than I can but I just have a little like nose holster right here there's my battery you know and in my battery I went in two you know, layers deep when I cut out the battery tray I just threw some velcro in there and just the last piece at the very bottom of the wing which is three layers of foam board by the way is the one that's uh, holding holding the battery on there now right here you want to put your, your canopy back on just basically slips right back into that holster thing right here in the nose and right here you can see my magnet just kind of clicks the back end into in place so my version one I've never had a canopy fly off so I have a lot of trust and faith in this design right here uh, but if you can come up with a better one one that looks a lot cleaner then all, all the merrier you know it, it's, it's up for really I, I'm sure you can end up improving on this specific model a whole lot more than I could and here only because you guys are, are pretty brainy over there um, and then finally uh, just the uh, Dragon Elevons right here make sure you put the 45 degree thing in there uh, this one seems to fly a little better than my first one for some reason I have no idea the Dragon Elevons are about the same size but it seems like it's a lot more steady with the yaw portion um, the back end of my last plane tend to slip around for some reason and I think it's because it was such a high profile of the nose this one is as low as I can get I barely squeezed a three cell into this canopy over here you can see my air intakes over here are pretty low profile my last ones are about three times higher than this and I think there was a lot of nose drag that was pushing into the wind and it caused the tail you know to be a little bit lighter or have less drag than the nose so trick is the, the less drag you have in the nose the more drag you have in the tail the more steady it's gonna fly just like a dart once again All right uh, if you've got any more questions feel free to email me um, uh, Good luck, and I'm actually excited to see you build this plane and uh, see it uh, take off on the Maiden. Um, hopefully it's not disastrous because, like I said, it's tricky to find these, uh, the center of gravity of these things. And I uh, almost forgot, which is three and a half inches from the nose. Right here, the stripe is my center of gravity. Okay? So as long as you follow that, when you're launching it, you just hold it right here, right where the center of gravity is. All right, you hold it right here slightly in front of the center of gravity. And what I do is I just basically hand launch it and side toss it. Away it goes.